Uh, okay, hi, uh, hopefully I got this recording here. Um, this is our Monday session starting for um, uh, week nine here. Uh, I had a few announcements that I wanted to make. I haven't had anybody join yet for our class uh, help session, kind of, well, a reminder, hopefully people are kind of still watching these when I post these. Um, but uh, yeah, I wanted to kind of uh, announce a few things. And, and uh, of course, uh, I was also thinking about going over test three a little bit, or, sorry, uh, uh, over uh, program assignment three a little bit. So usually, you know, it'd be better if you started working on this the week before it was due. But, um, but yeah, as a reminder, you know, program three is due um, on Wednesday. Uh, we're working on this resource allocation denial simulation, also known as the banker's algorithm. So I thought I'd go through that a little bit um, if I didn't get any questions from anybody. But uh, a couple of announcements, I'm trying to get caught up. Uh, so I got hit, as, as I'm sure all you guys, a lot of you probably got hit a lot worse than I did, but uh, had gotten a little bit behind. I did get test two return and I'm working on getting your program two um, and the problem set return. So I, I wanted to get test two return. You, you probably should go back and look at that now that I've given it back with feedback um, while you're thinking about, you know, studying for test three. So I think test two is a little bit harder for some people. Um, so you might want to look at the feedback. Um, so again, so you can get a better idea of sort of what I'm expecting, what, what kinds of questions you might see on the test and then what kind of what I'm expecting for answers from people on things. So, so yeah, there's some example answers um, and you should be able to go into the test uh, and look for more specific more specific feedback that I may have given you uh, for, for various things. Okay. And like I said, I'll try, uh, I'm getting, I'm, I'm almost got your program twos uh, return back here, but yeah, I'll also try to get the problem set uh, three return back to you as well before you, your test three is due. So you can also maybe look over that as well, um, an example solution and feedback from that. So. Um, So yeah, as usual, hopefully everybody is has kind of gotten back up to speed um, and is working on your program assignment three. Um, I have to remind myself. So I uh, let me see here. We kind of read the things here, but you know, I, I was kind of thinking as usual that I might uh, show you getting started on this. Um, so um, program assignment three, we're implementing a um, Algorithm, we're implementing the banker's algorithm. So we're imp implementing a simulation to look at um, a current state of a system and a request for a new allocation, uh, and then to, re to determine, to, to return, okay, is it safe to allocate that? Um, or sorry, is, I'm, I'm mixing up things a little bit. So, so should we allow that allocation or not? And the basic way we do that is we, we need to implement um, the, um, the, the, the heart of this is the implementation of the safe function that can make a determination whether one current state is safe or not, all right? So hopefully you've, you've watched my lecture videos and you've read our textbook readings to understand more in detail what it means to be a safe state or an unsafe safe state in the context of the banker's algorithm here, so. Um, so, I mean, we're, we're directly implementing the, um, the pseudocode shown in figure 6.9, and we're going to try to for the assignment three. Um, um, and when we start with the, the safe or the unsafe function. Um, so let me open up the code and um, um, let's uh, look through it a bit familiarize ourselves with it a bit here. So your first thing, um, I actually have you write a couple of, of uh, functions that we're gonna reuse to implement the is safe, okay? So if you get these three functions working, the needs are met, find candidate process, and the re release allocated resources, that makes it easy, relatively easy to implement the is safe function by just calling these three functions reusing them, right? Um, so before I get into that, let me let me look 
let, let me show you a little bit about um, the, the format of, of our simulation file and, and, and talk a little bit about um, how everything works here. So let's, let's bring that back up here. I'll just close these things off from assignment two. Last time I did some stuff on here, we're talking about assignment two. Um, So in this assignment three, you basically just have the, the you're going to be doing all your work in uh, adding stuff to the state.cpp. Uh, I'm sorry, no, the, um, yeah, that's right. So, so into our, into our file for the um, um, the class called uh, 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 state uh, uh, here, okay? So uh, as usual, you know, I've actually already given you, um, in, this, in this one, this, this assignment actually might be a little bit easier than the previous one because you probably are, I, I've probably given you all your member variables that you need, um, but, but I wanted to talk about that just um, because we're using, instead of using standard template library objects or things, we're just using straight, uh, uh, straight C++ arrays. Um, and we're actually using um, two-dimensional arrays in here. So, you know, if, if, if you haven't used two-dimensional arrays a lot in C or C++, um, then uh, you'll have to uh, maybe learn a little bit about those in order to do this assignment. Although if, if you look through and read through the code and understand the code, there's a lot of examples of using the, these arrays here. So let me, <coughs> let me kind of step you through here. Um, actually, uh, uh, let, let me kind of step you through um, reading uh, the, the code a bit here. So reading in, uh, loading a state from a file name. So that, that, that's a good place to start. That'll help you understand things. So, um, So this uh, load state uh, member function is called in order to load the state from a file name, okay? And then as usual, we've got um, files for, for um, our simulation here in the sim files directory. So let's just open up state1.sim, okay? So, uh, oh, I, yeah, I've got comments in here. So if you, if you looked in here, that might help. But uh, basically, these are just uh, a bunch of lines. We, we ignore the blank lines. So, so I got a little bit fancy on the um, um, this load um, state function in that um, we, we've got this, we, we skip over, we, we've got another function called skip comments, which will basically search for anything that's a blank line or a line with a pound sign in front of it and skip over those lines. Okay, so you can kind of ignore all those. These are just comments for us, okay? So but if you look at that, the, the first two numbers represent, um, and this, this for the state one here is actually the example from our textbook about how you calculate safe versus unsafe state uh, here. So in this, this case, it was the, this is a safe state, um, uh, the, the, the state one dot sim that we've got. So in this um, system state, we had uh, you know, the, the first line that, that's a vial line, that's not comment line, gives the number of processes and the number of resources, okay? So in this system, we've got four processes running and there's three resources in total that can be allocated and requested, okay? So that's, that's what these two first two numbers are. And, you know, those just get read in directly using uh, stream input. So we, so we just, we have our sim file open and we just read that line in. So, so we'll get four put into the number of processes and three into the number of resources, okay? And, and these are um, number of processes and number of resources. If I can bring the header file back over here again, so, so I probably shouldn't have skipped over this quite so fast, but you know, the, the state is just a class. Um, 
like like any C++ class or class in Java or some other language. So the uh, number of resources, number of processes are just member variables of the state. Okay. So if you don't know where those are coming from, uh, when we're reading those in, those those are just um, the, the member variables and that so you can use number of processes and number of resources and all these other member variables in the functions that you write as well that they'll have been loaded in uh you know these these have been initialized and loaded from a simulation file for you by calling the um um the uh, the, the load state function here that we're kind of stepping through here all right so um so yeah, so we read those into the member variables and then we do a little bit of error checking. So we've, we've got kind of a hard limit. Uh, we, only, we only allow simulations with some maximum number of processes or resources in here, okay. Uh, but, but anyway, um, so besides the error checking and the skipping over comments, the rest of the stuff is relatively simple. So um the next valid line is just a line with three numbers in it which represents the total resources in the system okay so since we've got three resources remember that we've got four processes and three resources in the system this represents the number that we have of resource um, uh, we, we, sh we should start um numbering these from index zero because that, that's how we do it in the simulation our textbook would call this resource one resource two and resource three but inside of our simulation, we renumber those to start with zero indexing just to make it the code easier. So think of this as resource zero. There, there's nine of resource zero, there's three of resource one, and there's six of resource two. So there's three, three resources in total, and we just number them zero, one, and two, or, or index them zero, one, and two for our simulation here. Right? And that's all this line does here. And, and again, you know, uh, it, it's good to read through it and understand this code. So this, you'll you'll need to do uh, lots of things that you're supposed to implement for this assignment three. You'll be doing similar things to what I do in this load state function that I gave you. you know? so, so if I need to iterate over my resources, I can, I can iterate from resource zero up to the number of resources and do something with each individual resource. So in this, in, in particular, again, th this loop is just reading them in again into a member array. So this is a, 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 there's an array called resource total, which has the total of each resources, zero, one, and two. So we just read those in in a loop. So this first one is going to get read into resource total at index zero, the next one into resource total at index one, and so on, right? So um, again, that's that that was the um, there it is. That, that was the resource total uh, array that we just um, out, that we just initialized from these values here, right? Um, and then the next two arrays are the claim array, the claim matrix, and the allocation matrix. So these are actually two dimensional matrices. Okay, so we've got each one of these has four rows because there's four processes. So each row is for a process, and, and then three columns. So this this is the number of resources claimed for each process uh, for each of our three um, resources in this system state here okay and again so like like we started numbering or indexing a resource to start at zero so resource zero one two uh, we in the simulation we index our processes or we number our processes starting at zero so this so for our four processes, you should think of these as process zero, one, two, and three. And again, that's because we're using C arrays and we use zero-based indexing. So that just makes it easier on the code instead of having to add or subtract one, you know, um, in our loops and things. So. so um our next line of code after we skip over comments again to, to read in the claim matrix. Um, notice we just use a nested loop, uh, and again, if you ever have to go through one of these two-dimensional arrays, uh, you, you can do something similar um, to this. So the, the outer loop goes over the processes from, from zero up to the number of processes. That's going to go over each row one by one, and then the inner loop goes from the resources zero to the number of resources. So that would go column zero, one, and two, or resource zero, one, and two, right? 
Uh, and then, you know, so initially this is going to be for process zero, resource zero, uh, and that will read in the three. So, so that means that process zero claim has, has a maximum claim. This is a maximum claim uh, matrix. Um, it has a maximum claim or maximum need of um, three of resource zero, right? Uh, and then in the inner loop, we'll, we'll next go up to resource one. So the next thing that we read is the two. So, so process zero has a, claim, a maximum claim of two for uh, resource one and so on, right? So hopefully you can kind of see how that works reading the claim matrix. Um, and then to read in the allocation matrix, it's the same idea. So it's actually the same structure, but we just read those into the, the member variable allocations to the, the, the member variable um, Claim. And so allocation claim is the maximum claim. Um, and then allocation is um, what we currently have allocated. So the number of resources allocated for each of the processes, each of the resources. Okay. So I don't remember if I checked anywhere. Probably if I don't, we should have added a check in here because it's it's illegal to ever have ever have more resources allocated than you claim as your maximum mean. So you should always see that every one of these is less than or equal to your maximum claim. So like process one here um, in row one claims it needs six of resource zero and, and it's currently has six allocated, claims it needs at most one of resource one, it currently has one allocated and it claims it needs at most three and it has two of the three allocated that claims that it needs at most, okay? So that's, that's what the claim matrix is, all right? Um, so yeah, from, from what I just showed you, that reads in and fills up the, the, the claim, it, it, it um, fills up the resource total that you have. Um, so, so, you know, the, the total resources got filled up and then, then we just saw that we read in the claim and the allocation. Um, we've got a couple of other th uh, other things. So um, we can also calculate the need, but we can infer these other two things um, um, from the information that we have. So the easier one to un understand is the resource available. Okay, so from, from the total resources, resources total, and then the total that we have allocated, we can infer what the resources available are. Okay, so, so we know that, that if, you, if you add up all of this column zero here, six plus two plus one gives you um, nine. We know that we've currently got nine of resource zero, or yeah, resource zero allocated, and that's the total. So that means that, that we've got zero of, of resource zero available, right? We do the same thing. We've currently got two of resource one allocated, um, and we've got a total of three. So we've still got one available, resource one. And we've got um, five, two, three, um, we've got five of resource two currently allocated. And there's six total, so so um, so there's also one of resource two available, right? So if you looked at the resource available as a vector, it, it, it came out to be zero one one because we have zero of resource zero and one of resource one and two um, available, right? And then the need is is just simply um, the difference between the claim minus the allocation, right? So if I if I claim that I need three. Of resources. If process zero claims it needs three of resource zero and it currently has one, that means it needs two more to finish its work, right? Um, and and it, it's so it's really you're just subtracting C minus A. So, so, so process zero need, has, a, has a need of three, two, two, or sorry, of two, 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 because uh, we just subtract this row from that row to get that, okay? So anyway, that, that's what the infer state information is. We, we call that from our load, but if you look at that, so basically, uh, so yeah, we, we infer the need, which is just subtracting the claim minus the allocation. So since we're working with arrays, we have to use um, a, a double nested loop. So, so like we did before, we iterate over the, the rows, over the processes um, for the outer loop and our, or the, over the columns or the resources from the inner loop, but we just subtract each claim minus allocation to get the need, all right? Um, so yeah, add to add, and then, you know, finally to finish this up, to calculate the number of resources available, um, we, we first had to do what I did by kind of by hand here. We first have to add, 
to calculate the current allocation for each process. So for each of these columns, um, So, you know, each of these columns, we want to iterate over each process, okay? So, so, so we have, have to actually iterate over the processes, right? So, so, so here, the, the outer loop, we're, we're iterating over the columns, over the resources. But on the inner loop, uh, for resource zero, we iterate over the processes from zero to four. Um, just, just be careful. So you always have to have the row first and the column second. So even though we're iterating over the columns, um, for the outer loop here, when we access the allocation array, we do it by process, you know, the, the row first followed by the column, right? But yeah, when we do this, so, so this basically ends up summing up all the values for the allocation for, for, um, for resource zero among the four processes. And then if you just subtract that from the resource total, that tells you the resource available like I did here. So that, that's what this does here, all right? So the results, you know, after loading the state here um, is that all of these member variables have been, have been initialized for you. So you've got the number of resources, the number of processes, and you've got your claim matrix, your allocation matrix, your need matrix, um, and your resources total and your resources available. So those will all be in there. Right. And you're going to be able to, to meet, you're going to have to be able to use those to implement uh, the things that you're supposed to implement um, for your assignment three. All right. So, um, so if you understand all that, I think it's relatively simple beyond maybe getting past if you haven't done stuff again with two dimensional arrays in C, you might have to learn that or brush up on that. Um, but let's just start by looking at the needs are met function. So that will probably be the only one that I'll work through here. I'm not going to give you the full solution for this, I don't think, but let's talk about that to, to get you going, to make sure everybody can get going um, on this. So for needs are met, this takes a process as its first parameter. Um, and an array of integers that represents the current number of resources available of each type of resource. We do that for a reason, but that's basically, we're gonna be passing in, like when we test this, um, that, uh, um, uh, that uh, you know, we calculated both of those, right? So, so um, we've got the resources total and the resources available. So that, that, that's, that's basically the kind of same thing that we just calculated here the number available of each resource, okay? So for the needs are met, um, basically what you're doing, so, so for, for, for a particular process, um, we, we want to determine if its needs are met from that available set of, of resources that we pass in as um, a parameter this function, okay? So again, to make that more concrete, um, let's, let's just go back and look. Um, so remember that um, we, we calculated the, the need for my process. So like for process, uh, I, I did that by hand. So for, for process uh, zero, um, since it currently has one zero zero allocated, um, that means that it needs two, 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 okay? So its needs are two of resource zero, two of resource one, and two of resource two. Right, so for process zero, right? So now if my, um, its, its needs are met if the available resources for all of those are, are two or greater, right? So remember right now our, uh, these are total resources, but our available resources were, I forgot, but um, our available resources were, um, uh, were zero, and uh, one, zero, one, one was the available resources, okay? So, so if I currently need two, 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 and I've got zero, one, one, um, that, that means that, I mean, it's, it's actually false that my needs could be met for process zero, because I mean, just for example, all, all you need is one counterfactual to sort of prove that. So basically, um, what, since I need uh, two of resource zero, and I just said that there's only uh, zero of resource zero available, once you subtract those, 
that means there's not enough of resource zero. So my needs um, aren't met by the currently available resources. Okay. So 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 if you read that, that that's what the um, needs are met um, is um, trying to do. Okay. So let's look at let me let me open up the um, the assignment zero test. So the very first tests that you should be trying to pass. Um, should be actually okay. So the first set of tests that I, I give actually are testing the load state, but these should all be passing because I, I implemented loading the state from a file for you. All right. So the the, the second set of tests um, should be trying to test that your implementation of the needs are met. Okay. So we actually load. I actually use like um, um, some of these. Um, state files um, for the test testing purposes here, okay? So in particular, um, we, we, we create a new state object called S and we load the state 01.sim that we've been talking about here. Um, and as, as we just walk through, it should be the case. Uh, so, so here, we, we even though the, the, the state has the currently available calculated for you, uh, we, we create a separate array um, to specify the current available. So, so we set the current available to be 011, and we ask, are the needs are met for process zero, right? And we already walked through that, that the needs are, are actually not met for process zero um, because it needs two of each and it doesn't have actually enough of any of these, okay? So notice that needs are met. We pass in the process number. So, so here we're, we're checking process 0, 1, 2, and 3, right? So in, in this one, if you look at the test, the only process initially whose needs can be met by, by 0, 1, 1, which are currently available, is process 1, okay? And you know, again, you should be able to convince yourself of that. So if we look at process one, it needs, um, uh, it claims it needs a maximum 613 and it currently has allocated 612. So that means it only needs one of process three and zero uh, of, of resource three and, and zero of each of the other resources, right? So zero, zero, one, right? Um, and if, um, the current available is 011, then its needs can be met because it needs zero of process zero, of, of resource zero. Sorry, I keep, I keep saying the wrong thing there. It needs zero of resource zero, and that, that's there's zero available, so that's fine. Um, it needs zero of, of resource one, and there's one available. So, so again, it, it doesn't need any, and there's, um, and, and so, so it really doesn't matter how many are of zero, of resource zero and resource one but it does need one of resource one and there's one of those available but we can meet all of the current needs for process one from the, from this current available vector here right so it should be true that that one um that is these so it should return true for that one um and false for that one okay so anyway like i said i'm not going to give you the full um um, solution for this. Um, as usual, your code should compile and run as given to you. So if I do a control shift C to make sure everything's clean here, and a control shift B uh, to build everything, so I'll take a little bit of time to build, but it should build when I, when I uh, and everything should compile. When I run, all the tests should pass until we get down to um, here, because let's look at so as usual, I probably gave you a stub for the needs are met, but we're probably just returning false. Um, or, or let's see what we're returning here. Um, oh. Looks like I've already got that implemented. Um, so I'm going to pause the video real quickly here so I can uh, clean up my stuff here. So I'm, I must have some solutions for a few things in here. So just a second, I'll be right back. Okay. Um, 
So back here, so look at the needs are met. So when you initially get it, uh, it's just gonna be stubbed out to return true. And if you do control shift T after building, so like I said, it should successfully build, but if you run your tests, um, the first um, failing one that you should get um, is actually on line 93. So since we're returning true, um, uh, the only one that's gonna pass is for one, because it's expecting it to return true, right? Uh, but so it's gonna, so not that is so it's expecting uh, these to return false uh, for all three of these, okay? Um, so like I said, I, I, uh, 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 I mean, you know, if, if you change that to false, you would expect, um, you expect it to be passing, you know, the, the only failing at 94, um, and then of course, maybe failing some stuff after that, right? So the, the task here is you need to use the information, you're given the current available, right? Uh, and now you need to check each process. Uh, uh, you need to check the current available against the need, right? The 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 um, um, and, and you have access to the needs array uh, because this is a member function of this class, and this has already been calculated for you. But you need to check that for each process, right? So uh, so yeah, probably, actually, I mean, there's no way for me to do this without given most of it here. So, so you know, for all of these, since I need to check all of the, um, sorry, not, not for each process, uh, you need to check it for each resource. So I can add that exactly backwards. Um, so the, the need are, you're, you're given a particular process. Um, so that's in the first index or each row that you need to check. And you need to check uh, the need for each um, uh, resource for one particular process. Um, against all the other resources in, um, in, in this case, in the array that you're given here, okay? So that means that, that you need to iterate over the, um, the resources. Right. So again, this this is similar to the loops that I have that I gave you ab uh, above there. So so we know that we need to check each resource for the given process. Right. So the basic idea, and you know, so so this loop will allow you to do that. So so then you just need to, to get it correct. What you're what you're testing here. So you're you're testing whether the needs for this process. So so the need for the process. Remember. The, the process always comes as the first index, um, and we're given that index, the, the process number, you can think of it as the, or the process index, um, as our first parameter here, right? And then, you know, this is a, the need is a two dimensional array. So for, for the particular process that we're looking at, uh, you need to um, check the particular resource, right? Spell process, right? So that 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 tells you. So for resource zero, we're going to be comparing the need for resource zero. So so what is the what is the logic statement that you need here? We, we need to 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 check whether the need um, is greater than what's currently available. So so if we find if we ever find a resource uh, where where we need more than is currently available, then uh, we have to return false, right? Um, because we can't meet that, that that need for that particular resource for this process. Okay, so that's all we're doing here. Uh, so the current available is just an array of of the the number of, of you know resources, right? And then that's what we're iter again. That's what we're iterating over here. Um, so we want this is a single dimensional array, one, one dimensional array. So, so you know, but again, so if we're looking at resource zero, we, we've got zero available of resource zero, right? And like I said, if our need is ever greater than that, then we we found a counterfactual. So we found um, 
a resource for, for the particular process that we're trying to test here whose needs cannot be met. So we need to return false for that, all right? So if we ever find a resource for a process, a need for a resource for a process that can't be met from the current available, to say that in English, then the answer is false, right? So then if we run that, uh, we see that 93 is passing. So we're actually returning false, but of course that should be unexpected. I kind of left that in by purpose because we're always returning false. But so, so we're not getting it correct here. So process one, uh, it should never have been the case that you know, so all of its needs for process one are actually can be met if you go back and look um, at, at, at the, the, the needs or if you calculate them for, for process one. Um, because um, uh, for process one, you know, you have to sub subtract this from that. So 613 minus 612 gives you 001, right? Uh, so it only needs one of, of resource two here. Um, and we've got one resource two, right? So, so process one should, is need should have been able to, to have been met, okay? So, but, but, so basically, you know, if if you never find a resource whose needs can't be met for the process, you know, so if you get through all of those um, and 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 none of it is true, where, where its need is greater than current available, then the overall answer is true, right? Um, uh, we did find a need. Um, uh, we did find a process whose all for for which all of its needs can be met, right? So if we do that, that should actually allow our needs are met to pass, right? And with that, that gets you pretty far, uh, right? Actually, that, that is the full implementation for the needs are met, okay? Um, so if you understand that, that should help you a lot to figure out how to do the, the, the logic for the fine candidate process and the release of allocated resources, okay? So for fine candidate processes, we're going to be reusing the needs are met. So, so the purpose of this function is we want to search through all of the processes and find the first one whose needs, uh, can be met by by some particular set of current available uh, resources. So, um, so oh yeah, there's two things here. So this takes an array of Boolean flags as its first parameter, um, and and a same common array of the current available. So the current available set of resources you should understand that. But but the first flag. Um, the first um, array um, is if, if you if if you did the textbook readings or watched my um, videos for this um, class for this section of the class, those the, this first array represents the processes that have been marked or unmarked. Okay, so a candidate process is a process such that it has not yet been marked. So, so the, the, where its Boolean flag is going to be false here, and its needs are met, all right? So really, for this function, all you have to do is iterate over all the processes and then call needs are met. But, but you only call needs are met for processes that are currently unmarked, that haven't been marked yet. So, so you have to use both this Boolean array and um, um, So I, I called that array completed um, in um, the, 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 the signature for the fine candidate process, okay? And, and again, if you look at these, um, so like for the fine candidate processes, uh, basically this is just an array of Booleans, right? So like if, if, there, if, no, if nothing's been marked yet, these are all false, right? But later on, as we're running the, um, the, the is safe 
algorithm to, to test whether a state is safe or not, um, some of the processes can be can get, end up getting marked um, once once we find a process whose needs can be met, right? So so you'll see some later tests on here where. Um, Oh uh, yeah, like like here where we start marking off some of these. You know? So here, um, initially, um, nothing has been completed yet. Um, but but yes. Yeah, so, so then we retry doing fine candidate processes where we start completing off some of these. So where where process one has been marked as completed, and so on. Okay. So that's the fine candidate processes. Um, oops. So the release allocated resources is supposed to simulate that. It, so if, if we find a process whose needs can be met, then the next step in, in determining whether a state is safe or not is we simulate that process running to completion, which all that really means is that we assume that we can allocate the resources that we know, because we know all the, the resources have been met for that process. And then we're gonna, we're gonna run that process till it's done. And then when it's done, it can actually release its resources and give them back, okay? So the release allocated resources is supposed to um, take a, a process ID um, and the same current available as a second parameter And then it's supposed to use the allocation array uh, for the state class to return back all these allocated resources into that current available vector that we uh, give as a parameter. Okay. So basically, what you need to do is you need to iterate over the resources and then add back in um, all the allocations into the current available. Okay. Um, and since we're passing in this as an array, if, if you add those into this array current available, those will get added into um, the, um, uh, the, 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 the thing that gets returned back here, okay? So, um, so if you look at the tests for um, the release allocated resources, we're basically simulating doing the step-by-step -step of the is safe um, algorithm here on the unit tests here. So again, if, if you understand these tests carefully, um, and if you implement the three functions, these will give you a big hint on how you then finally implement the, the is safe function, right? Um, so for the, the state one, um, the the candidate process oh, i forgot to mention the fine candidate process actually returns so if, if it um if there is one candidate process the first one it finds it returns the index of that okay so initially for this state one uh, only process one is a only process one needs can be met so process one will get returned as the first candidate process so, so again, we're checking that. Uh, this is kind of redundant, I think, check of what we did in the previous test. Um, but if we release the allocated resources, so, so, so again, notice that um, um, process one has six, one, and two allocated, right? Um, and the, the current available is zero, one, one. So after we release those, we should be adding six, one, and two to those to get six, uh, two, and three. Right. So, so I mean that, and, and that's in fact what happened. So after we say release allocated resources for the candidate process um, back into this current available vector here, we find that we've got six, two, and three, or, or you should find if we've implemented it correctly. Right. So that's that's what should be happening here, um, and so on. And then you need to put those together in order to implement the is safe. Okay, so um, so the 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 um, state zero was a safe state, so so it should return safe. State two um, is also uh, is not safe, so so it should be returning false. Um, so is safe just returns a boolean value, uh, but it, it it does that for you know, the, the current state. So, so here for is safe, I 
And again, I, I described that. I probably have a little bit of pseudocode or some comments for the, the is safe function here. I think I have that at the, the very first one instead of um, at the end here. So yeah, for is safe, I mean, if you cut, and these steps come directly out of the algorithm 6.9 or whatever it is, the, the, the figure uh, for, for the is safe function, the, the pseudocode for the is safe function. So, um, so, you know, you need to make a copy of the resources available because we're, we're gonna be modifying that, okay? So you need to copy the resource available from the um, member um, variable, resource available into a temporary, current resources available or whatever you want to copy, call it. Um, as a hint, there's a copy vector already implemented for you. So you could actually reuse that if you wanted to. Um, and then you need to create a list of those flags. So this needs to be an array of Boolean. And this, that, that, this, um, that represents the, the marked or completed process. And those just all initially be false, right? And then this needs to be in a loop here. So basically you keep looping forever, uh, calling um, um, find candidate process to, to, to see if there's a, a candidate process. Um, and if you find a candidate, you, you need to mark it as being completed. And then you need to, um, and you need to release this allocations back to your current uh, resources available that you have in here, right? Um, and then you're, you're basically done once find candidate process. So find candidate process, one thing I didn't mention is, is it should be returning, um, I'm sure I tested this. So, so if you look at the, the, the test for the find candidate process, um, it should be returning the special no candidate if there's no current process whose needs can be met. All right, so that's defined for you, um, again, in the state.hpp, uh, but yeah, we just use negative one because the, the valid processes, process indexes are zero, one, two, are bigger. So minus one could be used as a flag since we're using unsigned integers here um, to represent no candidate, right? So yeah, for your find candidate, you're supposed to return no candidate um, if, if it fails to find any process whose needs can be met. So anyway, back to this safe, you're supposed to keep looping until find candidate, can't find any more candidates. And then your final, um, um, your final answer is gonna be, it's gonna be true if everything ends up being marked. So, so if, all of, if all the processes were completed and marked, then you return true. Otherwise, if one or more processes, actually should, should never end up with one because there has to be at least two processes. Um, well, anyway, um, that might not be true, but but yeah, if, if one or more processes end up being unmarked after you uh, do your search, then the answer is false, okay? All right, so yeah, um, I think that should give you a lot. Like I said, I think this one is actually uh, simpler um, than the previous one. The, the, your next uh, program assignment might be back to being a little bit tougher or about the same as, as program assignment two. This one might be relatively quick, especially if you're comfortable uh, doing array processing, especially two-dimensional array processing in C++. Um, all right, so that's it. I'm going to stop this video. That, that should be enough. Hopefully, everybody's actually already started before this, but uh, if not, um, that should be a pretty good bit of information to get you started. Um, and with that, I will go ahead and end this uh, video, and I will see you later. If you have questions, as usual, feel free to email them to me. Um, and, um, and yeah, that's it for now.